Three and a half thousand firefighters stand ready tonight. Well, Australia's crisis has reached a new level in the last 48 hours. A state of disaster has been declared in Victoria. The communities across New South Wales are fighting to save their towns. Eight people have now died in New South Wales. And the worst is on the way. Then additional 60 homes lost. The state's death toll has risen to eight. Governments have to do far more to lift our firefighting capacity. You're afraid to talk about climate change. How dare you? Get on with your damn job or get out. We don't know if we're going to have a house or not, you know, after today. These are family homes. I can't describe how bad this thing was. This has been the craziest week of my life. And here's how it happened. <laughs> Let me just get changed first. What's going on everybody? It's Ash here. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna be talking about my past week in the middle of the New South Wales bushfires. I kinda of just wanna like tell you guys what I've experienced, what my family's experienced over the past week. It definitely hasn't been as bad as some of the other people in that area and other people across Australia who have lost their houses. But here's what happened this week. Now, of course, bushfires are a serious problem in Australia and we've been having this problem for ages. But this specific set of bushfires started in August of 2019. And currently today, the fires have destroyed almost 6 million hectares of land. And just to give you a comparison of the amount of area that's been destroyed, here's what it would look like if you put the bushfires in London. This entire space has been destroyed destroyed right now. And here's what the fires would look like in Singapore. And that's just currently. So many of these fires are still burning and they're unable to be controlled because they're just so severe. The blazes are sparked by hot, dry weather along with several accounts of arson, so people are deliberately lighting the fires. And they're all assisted by strong winds which tear these fires through almost every state in Australia. And the current death toll due to the fires right now is 19 people and there's still dozens of people missing. On the 24th of January, me, my four mates, my parents and my auntie and uncle went down to my grandparents' old house in Batemans Bay. And we were all just going down there for a little holiday over Christmas. But then on Tuesday the 31st of December, which is New Year's Eve, that's when we all started to get really worried. Another outbreak, 70 kilometres south at Batemans Bay. Those at North Batemans Bay told it's too late to leave. The blue sky, which we had treasured, had changed red. It was now raining ash and big chunks of burnt leaves. The air was full of dense smoke. It was so dense we couldn't even see the end of our driveway. It, it, it had honestly looked like a bomb had gone off. We went to go turn our lights on, but then we realized our power had been cut. Then I went to go call my mom on the phone and realized that we didn't have any cell service. Then my parents came running into our room and told us to pack our bags in the off chance that we might have to evacuate the house. I conserved the power on your phone because, because with no yeah. power, there's no way to charge it. Yeah. And then the text came. <laughs> we were being evacuated. I've been forced to evacuate. Bro, you can see the fire through the Trees. We're evacuating right now. So we all threw our bags in the car, we got the pets, we got the dog, we got the cats. We all went to the car, we had to hit the road to leave the town. And possibly the scariest part of that specific bit is that the one road to leave the town had been ravaged by the bushfires and was shut. <laughs> and we were trapped. So we went to the beach, which was down the road. It was a bit further away from the bushfires to go sort of camp out there and wait for all the fires to go, I guess. And when we got there, the car park was piled up with other families and other people there who were trying to seek shelter away from the bushfires. And here's where we got to really see how bad it was. Right, so we're on the beach right now. There's heaps of other families. Holy crap. It was super windy and these massive winds were just pushing the fire through the land while the support helicopters were dropping water onto the fires trying to fight them. I know I look like an idiot with these cloud goggles on but since there's like so much sand and ash being blown everywhere, the only thing protecting me right now. So we camped out there for a few hours until we were finally given the go-ahead to go back to the house. And after a few hours, after things had sort of calmed down for a little bit, me and my mates went for a bike ride to have a look at one of the smallest spots that had been burnt by the fire, which was just down the road, just so we could see the extent of what the damage was. And it was... <laughs> I, let me show you. Oh, the trees are all burnt. This is like all the full trees. Dude, we walked out that park yesterday. This was full trees and bush and everything yesterday. Damn, bro. 
Crazy. Okay, so we're back in the house. We got the all clear to go back in. It's still a bit sort of smoky and stuff. We just saw another helicopter with like the water package go over us, which sort of means that there might be a fire back behind us, which is the sort of dangerous spot. We, we still have no power. Luckily we have water, we have a barbecue, so we're able to make some some food. Um, But yeah, it was, it was super crazy down at the beach. It was really, it was, it was really scary and seeing being down there at the beach with all the families and everybody's safe, which is good. Um, but yeah. And then that was the end of the first day. My mom and my auntie cooked up a delicious meal with some of the remaining food we had left. Then we went to bed on New Year's Eve, knowing tomorrow was gonna be the first day of 2020. Basically, just hoping that things would get back to normal. <coughs> day, I don't even know, I, I guess it's day two of living in the bushfire area. It's still super smoky, still no power. They say power is not coming on for at least another week because they think all the power lines are all burnt, they're all burnt down. The little bit of reception that we had has stopped now because apparently once all the electricity goes out, the, like, the cell tower is running on battery, but now the battery's out, so now we have no service. Even when we went up on a mountain, there was like a tiny little bit of service, but now we have nothing. Now all the roads are still closed, so there's no way of getting home. And since there's no electricity, no the petrol stations are open, so no one can get any petrol. So we're having to ration petrol as well. Yeah, they said it's about 40,000 homes right now in this area without power. It's still super smoky, like pretty hard to breathe. All we can do is just sort of ration food and wait. Hope that the road opens. I'll let you guys know when I find out more. Um, <coughs> um, we've just sort of woken up, everyone's sort of... Just... <coughs> I can't fucking breathe. Can you see me? I don't even know if you can see me. I think this is our first full day without power or food or anything. January 1st, cool way, to, it's kind of a weird way to spend the um, first day of 2020. We sort of we slept like all day because there's literally nothing else to do. We got news that hopefully we'll be able to leave on Friday morning, so it's Wednesday today. That means we'll have another full day of no, um, no power, no cell service or anything. They think the water might be running out pretty soon, so we'll just sort of see how that goes. It's, uh, it's hard, I don't know. Some people have it so much worse than we do. We're lucky that we still have this house and there's so many other people in this area that didn't get to keep their houses, but you know, we're surviving. That's all that matters. We'll be able to go home soon. See you tomorrow, bye guys. Okay, we've just woken up. There's smoke everywhere. But we think it's all right. The main thing is the road's open. It's open. We don't know how long it's open for, but we've just been here at 6.30 in the morning. We're super tired. I have one bar of reception. Yeah, fingers crossed. I'll let you know how it goes. So we all started packing our bags in hopes that the road would stay open long enough for us to get through and get home. And it was still crazy smoky outside, but everyone was just so excited, even of the idea of being able to escape and get home. Let's see if we can actually GTFO at this place. And on our way up to the main road, we were able to see the street around the corner that got burnt pretty severely. And then once we reached the main road, we were able to see all these families and people there. They were all stocking up on petrol. Since some of the power in the town had come back on, petrol stations were now open and people were able to buy petrol so they could get out of here and go home. And then we went driving and we saw more burnt trees. And then there was more driving, more burnt trees, more driving, more burnt trees. Okay, so we've been riding on the road for like a few hours. Like we've been barely moving. We're finally at a stop. The only place that's open is KFC. It's pretty good. And we finally had a little bit of reception on our phones so all my mates were able to call their parents and let them know that they were safe since they'd basically just been off the grid for the past three or four days, however long it's been. I can't even imagine being a parent in that situation. Just heard that the road's closed again, so we can't even move. So literally all we can do is wait. So yeah, so over this dude, we're <laughs> gonna go home. We knew we were gonna be here for a while. We found a park around the corner, which we thought we'd be able to sleep in for the night. Oh, wow. And then me and my mates skated up to the shops to get some food since they finally had power to run the shop. This part was pretty crazy. No food at all. People were just wiping out the shop. No water at all, <laughs> except for us. Yes. Electrolyte, alkaline water. Very flavored. I'm so glad this, this wasn't sold out. Yo, it honestly feels like it's Black Friday or something because there's nothing on the shelves. We're all hanging out using the power points to charge our phones since we don't have any power at the house. And then I saw my dad do an ollie on a skateboard. Hey. Which is pretty cool. And then, to add on to this crappy situation, to make it even crappier, we've actually lost the cat now. We don't know where the cat is. It's, I don't know, it's like nine o'clock. Cause it's a cat, you know, they sort of go out at night and they come back. We're hoping that she's gonna come back, but we're in the middle of nowhere. So I don't know if she knows her way around. 
was so annoying. We've lost the cat and then the road closes and then apparently there's a new fire that started just around the corner. So we need, now we need to make evacuation plans for here if the fire reaches here, which hopefully it won't. Once we get to Nara, that's where all the fires sort of end. So then we should be able to get home to Sydney and to my bed and yes, but yeah. I'll let you guys know if and when we find the cat. Bye. And then we found the cat. <laughs> and then we all went to bed. Okay, so the end of the day is over. The road still hasn't opened, so we're stuck. We have to sleep here. We're gonna have to sleep in the back of the car, and then hopefully we think the road's gonna open up at about midnight. Luckily, we're not sleeping outside. Shannon is legit sleeping on the floor. And he's sleeping with our dog. Not like, yep. Okay, hi guys. I know you can't see me at all, but you can hear me, hopefully. Like 1 a.m., the road's still not open. Can't sleep. It's, it's just super hot and super cold. Just have the road up and soon. <laughs> that looks so tired. It's three in the morning. My cat is meowing. The road's open. And it opened, we bloody done it. So we packed up, we hit the road. It was still standstill traffic, but it was moving slowly. I mean, very slowly. And we kept driving and driving and driving and driving and driving and then we made it. We're home, holy crap. We freaking made it. Oh my God, what a crazy, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Now my story is in no way as bad as so many other people who are still there trapped in the fire. I just hope through this video, you've gained an understanding of what the sort of average person goes through in this time. And the arsonists who are out there deliberately lighting these fires, this is the true effect that they have. So many of our neighbors had lost their houses and were forced to sleep on the street. Through all this, I'm just so happy that my family and my friends are okay and that we all managed to make it home safe. Since these fires are all still burning, you still have a chance to be able to help out. Right now, the top link in the description is to the RFS, which you can donate to help support the volunteer firefighters protecting the houses and the bushland and the people down here. So please, it would seriously mean the world to me if you were able to click that link and donate as much as you can to help support these firefighters and the people in Australia. I love you all so much. I'll see you next time. Bye. This has been the craziest week of my life. And here's how it happened. <laughs>